Hi. Hello. Welcome to How's That Work? I'm Grady Spencer. I'm your host. Here we are. First moments of the first episode. Hopefully of many moments. Of many episodes. We'll see how it goes. We'll take it one at a time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about why podcast? Why this? Why now? Why me? Why you? Why are we here? Um... In all seriousness, no, 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 I'm choking around. What am I doing here? There's plenty of podcasts. Why? Well, to be honest, long-time listener, first-time doer. Always wanted to do one, and here we are. I like listening to them. I like being guests on them. Maybe I like making them. So that's what we're going to give it a shot. Um, I'll be talking more about that and about what's going on with me, what's going on with the music, the band, shows, things like that. But first, let's talk to Mr. Travis Heim. Um, The dude's a legend for many reasons, but for more than anything, in this situation, just epic levels of beast mode because um, he was so gracious to sit down with me um, a couple days ago in the morning. It was raining. Water was leaking everywhere at his restaurant. Uh, He was having issues, but he still was gracious enough to sit down with me. Had an amazing podcast, talked for like 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Epic. I'm like, man, this podcast is going to rule. Coming out of the gate so hot, so clean, looking good. Get home, plug the stuff into my computer. I had plugged the microphones into the wrong hole. Microphone hole, headphone hole. Did I put it in the microphone hole? No, I put it in the headphone hole. Couldn't hear anything we said. Not a gosh darn thing. Not going to work. Not going to work. So immediately felt like throwing up, crying, peeing my pants, all simultaneously. That's what I felt like doing. But I didn't do that. I texted Travis. I said, hey, man, thank you so much for doing that this morning. A little bit of a situation. It's complete trash. You wasted an hour and a half of your time this morning when you could have been doing much more productive things instead of sitting with some guy who doesn't know how to work stuff. And I told him I felt like puking. And he was busy for a few hours. And I thought maybe he's really mad. He was busy. He was getting a smoker in Dallas. As soon as he saw the text, you know what he said? No big deal. It's good practice. Let's do it again tonight. Just a freaking legend. He's the best. One of the best uh, pit masters one of the best ambassadors for Fort Worth and especially Fort Worth Barbecue. Um, it's an extreme honor to sit down with Mr. Travis Heim. probably heard it hopefully these microphones are working this time um okay here's how we're going to begin this um, we'll see if you kn- recognize what this is from okay. we'll test your music knowledge but some lyrics i'd like to read to you that seems appropriate i'm ready this is not the greatest song in the world no this is just a tribute couldn't remember the greatest song in the world yeah no this is a tribute to the greatest song in the world all right it was the it was the greatest song in the world which i think is fitting As we're sitting here with take two with Mr. Travis Heim, uh, we recorded the greatest podcast in the history of podcasts this morning, and I had the microphone plugged in the wrong hole. I thought it went well. It was great. It was fantastic. I got home, looked at the computer, and I I, I immediately wanted to vomit and cry, (laughs) like the good old cry vomit. Um, So, dude, thank you so much for, uh, for, for coming back in the evening. It's not raining now. Hopefully, we got microphones that work. So yeah, um, yeah, dude, it should be good. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. I asked them this morning, and then I got some new stuff too. But um, kind of what we talked about this morning, like in the past, let's say the past two weeks, as you you drove to Dallas today. I did. What are what are the things that you're thinking about? I'm sure you're listening to the ticket, but like. Where does your brain go? Is it like trying to fix problems or plan for new menu items or like what what does what does Travis Heim think about in quiet quiet moments? Great question. And we were talking before this and I said, 
like I don't remember what day it is. So I, sure. these, these are all hopefully all new. Yeah, also dude, good I love it. To yeah, the questions. I uh, what did I do today? I was trying uh, not to die. Uh, I went and uh, picked up a smoker. I bought a smoker, which is like you know, it, it's probably an addiction at this point. I think I have sure. more smokers than what I could actually use or yeah. do anything with. But uh, my friend Todd David at Cadillac, uh, he had one for sale that they weren't using. And so I messaged him and went and uh, picked it up, which was great. But then, like, when we were recording this morning, uh, I was distracted by the water running yeah. through yes. our windows. Yes. Sounded like we were in, like, uh, I don't know, some sort Dude, of... Dude, it was like, crazy, yeah. <laughs> weird water hurricane. everywhere. Um, so that was distracting. So uh, luckily, it, it wasn't too bad. And you know, no issues. Well, there was one issue I told you, which my wife is going to hate hearing this because I didn't tell her this, but yeah. I was driving down the road and then the on the dash it said, like, trailer disconnected. It's and that fine. was my first time driving that trailer. And so I uh, didn't know what the hell was going on, but it wasn't any issues. It yeah. was just like a wiring thing. It's always what you want to hear when it's raining outside. Oh, God, yeah. At yeah. that point I was in the express lane too, so I was going 70, not, like, too fast, but just... Uh, immediate panic yeah of what do what do i do here sure if I'm stuck? yeah so anyway uh worked out and then got it at the commissary so there wasn't a lot of free thought uh today i was listening to podcasts with uh, nate bargazzi nice who we we talked about uh previously that we both love yep um so yeah that was about it i think um if i have a quiet moment which is rare i try to wake up early before kid and wife sure. and uh, read if I can because um, then it's like the one free time not to think and usually today was a little early but usually around eight o'clock is when I'll start getting text messages yeah this broke this happened yeah this I want to do this I don't want to do that from everyone in our company so um it just try, you know, it, it, for me, it's hard to shut everything off. And so it's like, I'm constantly thinking about like, how can we improve this? Or what if we added this to the menu and all that, which I think you would think would be beneficial, but it's like a negative. Sure. Like if I'm like at the house, just like hanging out with, with Emma and our baby and tonight we're watching Brave. Yes. I haven't watched Brave before. Yeah. It's it was a good pretty one. interesting. Yeah, it's a good um, movie. But I'm thinking about, like, stuff that I'm going to do tomorrow, which sure. it's it's just – it's hard to shut off all that stuff and, and focus. So as much as I can, I try to not think about the business because it's just kind of all-consuming with yeah. what we do. I think – yeah, I talked about this morning. I think we might have even talked about it on your podcast, which n now reassess. You're the first guest on this podcast, How's That Work? I was one of the first guests on yours. Um, but I think we talked about of like when you are your own boss, like that's a dangerous thing because like it's you can't turn it off and like yeah. if unless one you're just kind of like a freak, lucky person who like yeah. everything works out and you don't have to think about it or you're probably like us too and you're like obsessed over it. So um, one thing real quick, but like if you so when you hear there's a smoker for sale. Like, do you immediately think, oh, I could use this to expand in this area or I can use this for a future thing? Or, like, is that kind of how it works or, like, yeah, is it just nicer gear, I it's, guess? It's really nice, yeah. yeah. It's a, a company. I guess it's a company. I don't – it's Austin Smokeworks, which was started by uh, John Lewis, famous barbecue guy, and his dad. Um, and they built all the big pits at Cadillac, too. And they built all the pits at Lewis Barbecue in Charleston and then uh, Law Barbecue, I think. But I don't know. They don't build a lot of pits, I think, anymore. Maybe that could be wrong. I don't know. But um, So they had uh, taught at a 500-gallon on a trailer that he wasn't using because they have a million other smokers. Um, so we had a double 500-gallon smoker uh, on – a trailer from Sonny Moberg, who makes yeah. great pits out of Dripping Springs, Texas. And uh, we had to take it to Dallas, the Dallas store, because we didn't have enough 
smoker space um, over there. We have like three massive pits at all the restaurants. In uh, Dallas, we just have like one big one and one medium sized one. Sure. Um, so we ran into that early on, uh, running out of space. And then when we reopened in February uh, there, we we had issues. So I went and took it over there. So it was like, that's what we use for catering and just kind of sure. special events. And um, it's parked in Dallas. So yeah. this was kind of like, you know, I don't need it. But I was like, well, that's awesome. You're not going to go buy one of those, you know, like he, he really gave me a good price on it um, for that price, you know, so um, it just worked out. And then, too, it was like can help him out because he's trying to get rid of it. And, yeah. You know, why not? So dude, that's rad. It was cool. Yeah. I can't wait to play around. on Yeah. It, you know? dude, I'm sure. It's, yeah. Just like a new piece of gear or something. Yeah. Um, so we kind of talked this morning and I kind of wanted to reframe the question. So. 99% of people eat at restaurants unless you're like Amish or something, <laughs> you know? So like, what do you think? Uh, and you know, people get really uppity. Sometimes <laughs> they have a lot of pride behind the, their, their spots or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, what would you say you think people like the general, they, their misconception of like a restaurant owner is like, do they, you know, do you think about is it, is it hard for you to not think about what they think about you, if that makes sense? Like, That's a great question. Um, we, I have a, we have a, like, it's called Culture Index. It's like mm -hmm. a system we use um, for hiring and training and all this stuff. And so it's basically like a personality test. Um, and so it's cool because you can, like, typify, like, this – person with this personality is going to have be a great cashier a great sure. manager this yeah. or that um and so it's really cool and then you can kind of like from a manager standpoint uh, you know i can be like this is uh you know some people like to receive praise like in private some yep. people it's like in front of everybody um so it's really interesting so the i'm beating around the bush or whatever but then the point of this um I don't, uh, I don't care what people think, sure. to, like it's yeah. a, but to a fault, like I, I don't, yeah. um, like the guy framed it as like with Emma, cause Emma's like the opposite of me, right. which is really great in a lot of ways. And, uh, she was like, are there times where you're mad at him and he doesn't know? And yeah. she's like once a week, like, all, <laughs> like, what do you mean? All the time yeah. this happens. So it's like, I don't, uh. I don't, I'm not like, uh, I don't really think about that, but I, I think um, in just like g general conversations and stuff, it's kind of like, especially with barbecue, it's this idea of like, I'm just drinking a couple beers, hanging out, you know, by the smoker and, you know, just farting and whatever. And then yeah. you just show up and that's, you know, open the door right. and that's it. And Cause that's what they see their like uncle doing with right. his pit or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like the backyard guy dream. And, and, yeah. uh, it's now with our restaurants and, and, you know, we're open here six days a week, seven days a week at the other stores. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. We're almost like 180 employees, I think now. Um, so it's, it's different. And I think that's where in, in general, um, I think the world is like lacking compassion the last couple of years. Yeah, <laughs> like that's definitely. sort of like gone out the window or any sort of, uh, empathy. And so, you know, it's, it's, we were talking about a thing last night where I got food and they like left something out of the bag. And I was like, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to burn the place down. <laughs> yeah. I don't, like <laughs> yeah, dude. even it, with yeah. what I deal with and all the crap that goes on that just brief moment of like, pure anger and and i think with everything people have going on and stuff they're dealing with it's like it's hard to understand the amount of work that goes into it you know you're just like oh i'm gonna come pick up food or eat or have a drink you know whatever and um with with our restaurants with barbecue and then pretty much everything um cuisine unless you're like fast food i guess um there's a lot of work and a lot of effort that goes into it behind the scenes until you get to that point where it gets on your plate and all sure. that. So yeah. if there's any misconception, I think it's that, you know, 
this is easy and you yeah. know this why why is this high school pr-? you know we've had right. like, complaints like that where people are like yeah. this high schooler didn't give me good service yeah, you know dude. like well, it's just such a weird position to like For sure. complain from yeah when you're like everyone has value and and works hard for the most part i mean sometimes our staff doesn't work hard but sure you know it's just uh for the most part everyone's really trying so i think that's the the part of it where like if things do go wrong or you make a mistake or this or that um you know it's like why is this so hard this is yeah. like easy definitely and then i'm saying that also saying that i literally did that last night yeah so like, well i mean I'm yeah no better than i think me. that's yeah. just i mean i i love america i love living <laughs> here but i think that's just kind of our western culture of like we want it now we want it fast and we want it easy <laughs> um I, I guess uh point blank like what would you say the the most i mean this is a really broad question but like is there one issue in being the owner of multiple restaurants that you say is like if you could tell those people like this is the this is why it's hard like this is the hardest part of what i do like would it be staffing dealing with the whole operation the actual cooking type thing or what would yeah you say? that's a great question um you know a lot of the stuff like our whole you know goal or whatever as we've grown is to try to be more consistent yeah there's a ton of variables with barbecue cooking barbecue and all that and so like every step of the way we've tried to to cut down to make it as seamless as possible which is still like really ridiculously hard but um you know staffing stuff right now i think that's something that i was talking about with a friend that um same situation but it's just that I think the restaurant industry was like really like there was a lot of like cracks in the dam. Yeah. You know, like for the, sure. I think it was like a Simpsons episode where he yeah. just keeps putting yeah. his fingers <laughs> in the holes and that's I think was going on for a while and then when COVID happened it kind of just broke where it was like yeah. there was a lot a lot of issues caused by that but then made worse by that. And so it's tough a lot of people I think have left the industry there's not really a ton of people coming into the industry but um it's just kind of what you're always dealing with so you know training you know making sure we have retention is good all that which is great but at the end of the day it comes down to like are you a place where people want to come to work you know where they feel valued where they feel like one they're being compensated fairly which is a big thing definitely restaurants in general you know, um, it's kind of tough to make a living. And so um, there's a lot of factors like that. I, I think in general, there's a million things that kind of make it a little more tough than it used to be. Um, but that's, you know, it, it's, we have big goals, you know, and ambitions. Sure. So I think we purposely kind of make it harder on ourselves. But the thing that the position I'm in now is trying to like, just really develop the culture to where we want of like what we're saying that people feel valued and they want to come work and um, create opportunities for people to grow you know as we've grown into these new restaurants and we're building new restaurants we're giving you know team members that have been with us for a while opportunities to move up to make more money Um, so it's kind of a win-win so that's I don't know I I really enjoy that part of it but it's uh it's really hard and I think you know like there's a a podcast where I was listening to with some other restaurant owners and it was like the the end of it was kind of like this thing of uh, you know the last year sucks and like whoa me which is I you know it's it's not easy but it's like it's not like we're cops. Sure. It's not like we're yeah, like dude. brain surgeons. Yeah. You imagine being a nurse dude, the last yeah. two years or oh, like man. trying to be a teacher with For like sure. kids being masked yeah. and just everything. So I don't know. I'm not here to just complain about my problems. I think we, we're in this business because we love it and it's great. And if anything, it's just kind of interesting new challenges that when we open our food truck seven years ago or whatever, however long it was that um, we didn't deal with. So it's just yeah. different kind of problems and, you know. Dude, that's perfect segue in the next question, um, which is a great answer, by the way. But um, 
I was thinking about it today as I was listening to the really, really crappy audio of what I could hear. <laughs> and I was thinking about this of like talking about time going by. If you could get in a, if you could one, yeah, just get in a time machine. I would say you have to clone yourself, but I'm already kind of going to fantasy world with a time machine. If you go back in a time machine and you talk to Travis and Emma in the food truck seven years ago, what, what do you imagine, like, would that conversation be, would it be encouraging? Would it be quit, get out, go do something else? Would it be like, hey, get over yourself? What, what do you think that, that, uh, that convo would be like? Very interesting. I think, um, hmm. I, I genuinely, like, never thought we would be where we're at now. Sure. Like, truly. When we opened the food truck, I had gotten laid off from my job. Emma was still working in oil and gas. And we had been doing, like, pop-up dinners, you know. But it was kind of – it was never with the understanding that this is something we're working towards a restaurant or doing. Um, It was just kind of a a fun way to use the smoker my uncle gave me that we have out here at our river location. so I think that it was such, and it has been such a quick kind of growth over the the few years. Uh, I would be probably a little shocked. Yeah, you know? for sure. Maybe a little terrified. Like, yeah. have how many employees? What, how do we, who do we order meat from? For what sure, we, yeah. Like, how do we even do that? Yeah. We have a daughter? What? Yeah. <laughs> like, what <laughs> is going on? So I think... Um, I don't know. We, we've always tried to be, like, really mindful of that and organic of, like, as we have grown um, to where we're at now. So I, I think it, it'd be really cool, but I think uh, I'd probably be terrified to answer For the sure. question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just life, and, like, you don't know. And, and as much as we can give advice to people and be like, this is what you should do. You know, it's just like, no, this is just what you did. This is how y'all did it, and it, things fell into place for you, and it was like it worked out. We've been asked like a million times to like advice and stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, like guys that are in food trucks now and different. Like TCU wanted me to do a thing, and it's like I like they wouldn't even let me on campus. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I like yeah. and then now they're asking me to like teach entrepreneur classes. Um, they're out of their minds, and so that what I've usually my joke is like it was it was an act of faith yeah but in reality it was just uh ignorance i think and not understanding like the amount of work that would have to go into this to to really be successful but when you're like broke and like literally broke and nothing you know going on and and you know i had gotten laid off and stuff it was kind of the the perfect storm of like, okay, well, we can take this risk. Sure. And if it doesn't work out, yeah, we're gonna live with my in-laws. But that's yeah. not the end of yeah. the world, you know. It's uh, then we won't have to pay rent at least. Yeah, so it's. Did you have a pretty good idea though of like if of what that workload was gonna look like back then, or were you just kind of taking it day by day? I think so, because that's like we had done pop-ups and we called it like T and E Meat Club. And it wasn't, like, really a pop-up, like mm-hmm. what I guess you would do now. It was, like, friends, we brought that smoker. We lived in a crappy apartment here, like, literally not far from here now where we live. And um, we took that smoker to my brother-in-law's house because he had a place in Arlington. And he let us park it there. And we um, just threw, like, parties. And, like, a friend would grab a guitar. Like, we'd have beer. We'd do, like, a different menu and kind of... Fun stuff, and then everyone would throw in, like, 20 bucks. Nice. And then it turned into a, like, okay, too many people are showing up. Yeah. So we need to do, like, a ticket thing. So then we'd sell X amount of tickets. It would sell out. And so it was really cool. And so it was, like, through that process, I had worked at a bunch of restaurants. I worked at Joe T. Garcia's mm-hmm. in town, which I still love. Um, and... Through that, I got to cook with some guys in Austin, John Lewis, who I mentioned earlier, Aaron Franklin, see super high volume production, but at Franklin and La Barbecue, it's still like, in my opinion, some of the best barbecue in America, you know? And so like being able to see, okay, you can do 
this really incredible stuff, really craft barbecue, whatever you want to call it, but cook a hundred briskets and yeah. do all this. So I wasn't like naive of just didn't know what we were getting into when we opened the food truck. Um, cause I knew that side of it and the food, I felt good about our recipes. I was confident about, you know, I, I feel like I know, you know, food well and I've been cooking forever and cook, you know, the first brisket I cooked, I was 12. Yeah. So it's not like I just like started this. It's something I've been doing my whole life and, and, uh, really enjoyed. Um, if anything, it was like learning the business side of it. Sure. And yeah. like two ish months in was when we got a good review with the star telegram, which was great. We got, uh, on channel eight, uh, Lauren Zakalik did a, a story on us, which then the next day we like blew up. I mean, yeah. it was crazy and we weren't serving that many people to begin with, but then it became triple, you know, quadruple what For we sure. were doing. And so then Emma quit her job and came full time. We hired Rowdy, our one employee, yeah. I think, you know, yeah. um, great dude. And, um, uh, but then it's like, uh, what is payroll tax? What yeah, is, yeah, uh, dude. you know, health department stuff and right. just all the like, you know, random stuff and then things breaking and all that. So that was when we were in the truck, we were open. I think when it got to the end, it was like three days a week, but we were putting in 80 hours a week. Yeah. I mean, at least cause I'd be cooking basically four days, usually a day before that we're prepping, Emma's doing all the sides at home and like her time when she wasn't at the, the, uh, truck, she broke a whisk. I've never heard of anyone oh, doing dang, that, but like dude. a welded whisk from, uh, overuse yeah. banana pudding. Um, so it's interesting. So I think we were naive to like all of that other crap that's involved, but yeah. then you just kind of figure it out as you go. And, and we were able to keep it, you know, to that. And we're really kind of just like obnoxious about, you know, this is what it is and this is all we're going to do. And then, um, part of our growth and moving into a restaurant was just really being unhappy with like, I don't want to be this thing. I don't want to be this where people get here. People are showing up at seven in the morning to wait in line. Yeah. I would tell them to go home. Yeah. Like, it's not that good. It's not good. Like, just, yeah. You know, like it's, it's just, we want to be able to serve more people and make it accessible and, inclusive and all that and uh we couldn't do that in that setting so the the whole idea from the uh, pop-ups food truck to now trying to take all of the elements that we loved of each of those things and and kind of meld it in a way that's also family friendly and everything else yeah if that makes sense that's great all right we just check it dude cheers cheers to the camera still rolling we took a little break to make sure everything's still working um this morning I'd ask a question about fighting other restaurant owners, but I think I'm gonna <laughs> amend that because it just felt a little too negative. A little too <laughs> but, yeah, so yeah. we'll just let that one go off into the ether because that was my fault. I put the position, but let's say tomorrow you wake up and there's a wizard sitting in your living room, and this wizard's like, "Okay, Travis, Heim Barbecue has to turn to." one of these three choices it can't be barbecue anymore okay. it can either be I like a this. pastry bakery korean hot dogs are you familiar with this genre very familiar yes. yeah. yeah or yeah. hibachi <laughs> okay and let's pretend like you had the setup to do hibachi stuff okay what would you go with very interesting question thank you i would say I'm going to kill uh, the Korean hot dogs. Yeah. Because it's weird. they're unique. Yeah. And uh, we do corn dogs, corn dog For king. sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I know you're familiar with it. Yeah. But um, I feel like that'd be a little out of my depth and I yeah. wouldn't want to appropriate or yeah, you know, do. For anyone who's like curious, that. YouTube Korean hot dogs, like, they're nuts. I, I, oh, man, <laughs> over there, like, the street food in Korea and, like, Viet, Vietnam, Vietnam, I don't know why I said it like that, but, dude, they get wild. It's it's very creative. There's yeah. a place in Dallas I saw yeah. an article the other day about that uh, apparently does, like, traditional, um, or I don't know how traditional it is, but, sure. you know, whatever. 
Um, I'm a big fan of hibachi. Yeah. You know this. And, yes. And uh, we've talked at length about Japanese Palace. Right. Uh, the bar at Japanese yes. Palace, which yes. is phenomenal. Yeah. And we're, you know, I don't know how it still exists, to be I honest. I don't either, you know? yeah. It's, like it's kind so of one strange, of those yeah. Things locked in time that you yeah. would have thought would have been canceled by now, but if you don't know what we're talking about, just go there. Yeah. Sit at the bar, but... Yeah. Um, I don't... I That, to me, you're, like, one drunk cook away from a lawsuit. Dude, it's so wild, When yeah. they get the onion volcanoes yep. going, and then there's some friends... Uh, that had a hibachi. Have you seen the backyard hibachi now? No. So there's a Sounds company in Dallas, and they bring like a blackstone to your backyard, <laughs> and they do a hibachi for you and your friends. That sounds nice. And we experienced this a few months back, and it was phenomenal. It was yeah. incredible. Dude, that's and, a great idea. Uh, but the, I bring it up. There's some friends that did it the other day, and they like lit a hat on fire and made <laughs> the guy wear it and are super soaking... Uh, you know, socking yeah. into people's faces. Taking it to another level. Just next level yeah. uh, hibachi. Um, so to me, for the business side, that worries me. For sure. Um, my mother ran a bakery when I was growing up. Yep. And, I, uh, and then she actually opened the bakery at Central Market here in Fort Worth. Whenever Dang. they opened, she was like the head bakery manager. Um, so I would probably go with that. I, I'm... I have all of, like, the Tartine uh, cookbooks, and I'm not, like, a big nerd about it, but I got into the sourdough craze. Yeah. I was trying, you know, doing my own starters, mainly for pizza dough. Um, but I love baking, and I love, like, the science and everything behind that. So I think uh, in the longest way possible to answer your question, I would probably do bakery. No, I love it, dude. That's, yeah. that's exactly, like, exactly what I was looking for, like, there's a difference between being a fan and then, like, you're already thinking of the lawyers that would come along with having a bocce thing. And you're right. I hadn't thought of that because I don't have that kind of forethought. But you're right. There's a lot of danger there. Or, like, just somebody just putting their hand on a yeah. grill. It's just right there. You get the Mai Tai going. You throw yeah. a shrimp in some lady's mouth that's <laughs> got an allergy. I mean, there's... It's a dangerous game. For sure. To, well, yeah, because the allergy lady, like, probably socially awkward. She doesn't want to embarrass herself. No, gotcha. So she, would, yeah. she would just prefer to deal with the allergic reaction it. to not be embarrassed. And then next thing you know, yeah, you kill somebody. And then it's your fault. And then it's You're your literally, fault. like, yeah. just, you know, sniping people in the face yeah. with uh, shrimp tails. I've never thought of that, but you're totally right, man. This is, yeah. the, this is the stuff I think Dude, about. Dude, that, that is. You're We're driving down the road of, like, honest, man. Yeah. What about people who are allergic to shrimp at hibachi places? I would I would love to open a hibachi place, but I have yeah. all of these concerns. <laughs> that's right. I that's don't have I enough lawyers three on in the, the morning. Yeah, 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 dude, that's that's incredible. Um, do you and Emma ever take a step back? I mean, I know it's hard because you, you have a young daughter. You're blowing and going. You're expanding, but do y'all ever have moments of, of looking back and like what what are those? moments that kind of snap y'all into that moment of like we're, we're proud of what we've done like look look at how far we've come and like yeah not not like. enough i think sure you know i think that's my personality is it's more like what's going wrong yeah what do i need to fix and all that um but and em is really good about it about like thinking about that and so we had uh August 6th was our sixth year anniversary at Magnolia, which was a really cool deal. And so like, as much as I hate social media, you have that where then you see all the posts from six sure. years ago yeah, and yeah. all that. And so that was really cool. And we talked about it a little bit of like experiencing when we opened Magnolia and then that being like, this is, this is it. Yeah. This is the dream. You For know? sure. And, experiencing that looking back at that was really cool compared to like where we're at now um and then the other day we were talking but we did uh thursday uh texas monthly hosted an event or we hosted it for texas monthly um 
called the Barbecue Fest Pit Stop, and mm-hmm. they did one in Houston and Lubbock, I believe, and then Austin, they're doing one. Um, but it was here at our river spot. We had like 200 plus in the backyard, and uh, it was us with uh, Goldie's Barbecue, Danes, and Panther City, all really great uh, local places. Um, and I, we talked about it a little bit before that, but then the next day where it's like, it was just really cool. Cause like growing up in Fort Worth, um, this is my hometown, all that. To me, it, it's always been a big deal, you know, that I'm from yeah. here. And, and the reason that we didn't, you know, do anything in Austin or anywhere else was we wanted to do what Aaron at Franklin and others were doing uh, Pecan Lodge in Dallas, you know, yeah. they were like really, in my opinion, the first kind of craft, whatever barbecue in Dallas, um, do that here. Cause we already, I thought had really good barbecue and always have had good places. The old school Angelo's Risky's cousins, you know, railheads, et cetera, uh, Bailey's downtown. Um, but the kind of this newer sort of deal, um, so it means a lot to me. And then to see where like Panther City's in our old place where our food truck was and they do Tex-Mex barbecue thing that's just awesome, really good. And then the Goldies guys and all, all those others like seeing that and then how the scene in Fort Worth especially has grown to where like we're at that event and people are saying Fort Worth is the capital of Texas barbecue. I think one of the Dang. Goldies guys said that. Yeah. And like, that's insane. Yeah. I mean, and, and, um it's really cool and so to think like we played a part in that and are still kind of playing a part in that um is really cool and that's some that's one of those things that i've never would have thought or believed yeah. or if you told me that like <laughs> their texas monthly would be saying four worse the capital of barbecue like you're out of your mind but um pretty cool so there there's brief moments like that for sure in between all the bullshit that we deal with that, that make it really um kind of bring you back to like why why you're doing it and um and it's cool it was really cool yeah dude well i mean that's super encouraging to hear because like you know it, whether it's music industry restaurant industry like the people that you like to root for and it seems like experience the most success the answer to the that question isn't oh well, we won this this award this award this right. award and we're proud of that you know it's it's a community thing and like you're viewing it as a big picture thing and i think that's i, I for some reason that seems to ensure success at some point because it's not i think if you start trying to put yourself on a pedestal and like i'm the best yeah it won't be long before you fall off because uh yeah, yeah. There's, some, there's always going to be somebody else that comes behind you. you know? Well, I heard, um, I forget what, but I heard something the other day, and it was talking, like, somebody talking about reaching the top of the mountain, yeah. you know, and, and that whole sort of, uh, you know, kind of story of success and all that, and then people fall off and this or that. And But what I thought was interesting was uh, the guy said, like, so you reach the mountaintop, but you can't live there. Yeah. Like nobody yeah. can live there. It's not sustainable no yep. matter what. And so like, I think that's a, a good thing with success is like, you know, when we started, we we're getting best new restaurant, everything and all this stuff. And it was really cool. But it's like, if your fulfillment is in that stuff, it's never going to sustain because there's always going to be new places. And there's yep. going to be new stuff. And you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to constantly think about that. And um, for us, that's not the goal. Like, if we wanted to, like, make money, we wouldn't be doing half of the shit that we do. For sure, you know? yeah, like, yeah. We'd be doing, we certainly wouldn't be doing barbecue restaurants, but I think that's something that I found really profound is, like, you really can't live in that moment and you have to, you know, be mindful of, like, this is, there, there's more to this and there's more... You know, like we've I've talked, but there's more to life in general, not to get weird about it. But like, this is what we do and it's a job and I love it. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm trying to provide for my family and yeah. all that stuff. So you gotta, you gotta have balance and you gotta, you know, make sure uh, we're doing the right things, treating people fairly and 
and all that stuff. Um, and then I just believe that if you do that, you're going to, things are going to work out for and, sure. You know, that could be naive, but yeah, I, no, know. dude. I mean, that's, I was going to re ask the question, but you kind of just nailed it of like leaving your legacy, not only on the barbecue restaurant professional side, but just in general of like 40 years from now and Travis Heim is like getting ready to call it quits on this world. Like, what do you, what do you hope people remember you for? And I think what you, what you talk about is that, is that it, you know, being a good dad, being a good father. And, um, yeah, I, I think, um, uh, yeah, I think what you just said, you nailed it with that. Thanks. So, man. Yeah. I had a friend tell me, which then this will probably ruin it. Oh, we got a phone call, but I had a good friend, uh, do you want me to wait? For no, that? no, it'll yeah. be good. Uh, yeah. I had a friend, kind of a mentor, say, like, you can't be a great father, a great husband, and a great boss. Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, a very, like, honest way and direct of, like, something's got to give. Sure. And I think that's where, to me, you know, because we, uh, you know, we didn't know if we could have kids, and that's a whole other story, but... Um, you have our daughter and it changes your life. I mean, yeah. I know you've experienced it and yep. it's crazy. And so then a lot of my motivations change and ambitions and you're like, this is why I'm here and all I care about. And, um, you know, to that point, what, what he was saying is like, you got to spend time where it matters. And so like, as much as I can, we were talking about even tonight, like I did all this stuff and was running around crazy all day but got home to have dinner with the girls, put Izzy down, and then came back up here. And that's what I do a lot of nights where I'll go yeah. back up to the restaurants if, if I need or something's going on. Um, and so you kind of just work around it and, and try to make it go. But, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, there's a lot to this. And I think, um, you know, for us, and especially my wife is really like, really great and probably could explain it a lot better. But, you know, at the end of the day, we just want to make great restaurants that people enjoy and and we're not trying to be the best we're yeah. trying to be like your favorite you sure know? And I yeah think that's more uh, more the goal for us and and kind of the legacy we'd like to leave and we were talking about Szechuan. i feel like we got yeah bring that up dude we do man I, well i almost <laughs> i was kind of in a hurry i almost uh picked up a gift card on the way back up as like a sorry we had to redo all of this but we were talking about <laughs> Szechuan on Lock Avenue in Fort Worth, and there's a man there who literally is there every time. Every he day. answers the phone, and he is going to be my dream guest for the podcast now. He would be awesome. Yeah, it would be incredible, and uh, it's just it just goes to show like that's it's probably not the it's probably not the best Chinese food, but it's my favorite. Right, and a lot of it has to do Delicious. with him. Yeah, and it's that guy, you know, and it's like it's incredible. I love like created. I love restaurants in general, you yeah. know, and it's like people clown like chains and different sure. stuff and like you know, I I think uh this is just like maybe just weird of me, but like there's so many like different things to learn. So like I I use them as an example and then there's I think it's called K's Donuts uh -huh. over by uh Magnolia and when I was like there every day I'd go uh over there and like the lady behind the counter it's the same way it's the lady that owns it she's there every day you know working her ass off and like the best service you could ever possibly have yeah genuinely happy that you're there and you know you're spending five dollars for donuts or something yeah and it's like so i think that's what's cool about that place is like it's you know what you're gonna get for sure it's never yeah. a surprise yeah like it's like this is gonna be as delicious as i always remember it's going to take exactly 15 minutes yep. from the time I order. And that guy's going to be super cool. He's going to be the uh, best. You know, calls you Mr. Whatever <laughs> yeah. and everything else. Welcome back. Um, welcome back. Yeah. yeah. He's great. Did you just shook something loose? And this is, I, I didn't <laughs> even plan this, but you saying chain restaurants, I'd really love to get your perspective. There's a guy named Ben Rector. He's a musician. Yeah, you know him? I've heard him, yeah. Yeah, dude, yeah. He's, he's great. He put out a new album. It's incredible. But he, he like, makes these funny little reels on Instagram. And he did one where he was playing piano. It was a really catchy, like, melody. But he, like, sings it. But he, he basically says, 
you know, tell me, did chain restaurants get worse or did we all get more bougie? <laughs> what do you think the answer is there as a restaurant owner? That's no, a, a non-chain question. restaurant I think, owner. Um, like, is it getting worse or are we getting, like, are we getting worse, I guess? I think collectively we're getting worse. I think that's probably yeah. the easiest way to yeah. to describe it. But I love, there's a some friends of ours that have a... Uh, it's a group text and a group and they call it chain gang. Yeah. And the idea is, uh, you used to do it a lot, but then everybody has kids, but, uh, experiencing some sort of chain restaurant, be it Olive Garden, Chili's, et cetera, um, going as a group, ordering God knows how much food, alcohol, and then leaving like a hundred percent tip. Yeah. And, uh, it's awesome. That is and incredible. It's yeah. a lot of fun. And, I I think that's like there's it's an issue in barbecue right now but it's more so like a problem I think the the more you get into the Michelin star James Beard whatever is just a, a pretentiousness when it comes to restaurants and exclusivity it's almost like the more exclusive something is the better it yeah. is the place that has you have to get a reservation two months out is the best. And uh, I despise that sure. in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, and and again, I'm the one guy in barbecue that doesn't want to have people stand in line, but um, take that for what you will, right? But I, yeah. think, no, I think it's what's, yeah. what's interesting is like go to a Chili's or yeah. go to a whatever place like that on a Friday and you see – like families right. experiencing a dinner and maybe they don't have, you know, the money to come here to go to a steakhouse or this or that. But those experiences are still meaningful. For and sure. It's still like at the end of the day, you know, the more corporate stuff, you're like, OK, you know, it's corporate. But there's still real people that are working hard to produce that. Yeah. Um, so that people can enjoy it. And I think. Um, yeah, that probably doesn't answer the question. I think you but, nailed it, dude. You know, yeah. I, no, I think, I, I mean, I would agree with that. I think as a society, we talked about it earlier, like, Americans, we are more bougie on the whole sure. of, like, so it definitely makes sense. <laughs> um, well, dude, I think I've taken enough of your time, especially on round two, but what, uh, I guess, what's next for, uh, we talked this morning about what's next for Heim Barbecue, yeah. what's next for you and your vision, you and Emma, like, what are y'all... Uh, what are y'all working on right now? Yeah. Um, it's really like, you know, kind of just fulfilling a lot of stuff that's been in the works. Cause like we, when we opened the Dallas store was kind of like at the start of COVID and it's really blossoming and kind of doing well. And so that's exciting, but really trying to build, you know, more of a catering business on that side. Um, there's a ton of opportunities to like grow and build restaurants there, but it's not nothing that we really want to get into right now. And so um, both things that are two years almost in the works are we're opening a restaurant in Burleson, Texas, yeah. um, south of Fort Worth, which uh, is going to be really cool. Very excited about. And then one in uh, Hudson Oaks, which is just west of Fort Worth uh, between kind of Alito, Weatherford, out near the H-E-B. Nice. So, yeah, there it is. Um, I know where that is. Those are under construction in the process. Probably won't open until this time next year. Yeah. Burleson may be a little bit sooner. Um, but, you know, every contractor you talk to in this or that, it's like, oh, man, you know, this is yeah. da, da, da And you're yeah. like, is this Lumber's real? Lumber's eight, eight months <laughs> back ordered, man. Yeah. Somebody ate a bat. Sorry, contractors. For yeah. Somebody that ate a, a bat in China, and now I can't get steel yeah. beams Dude, for my yeah. restaurant. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. So those are kind of the main things we have going. And then um, I think that's probably enough. Like, I don't, for sure. It's, we, we, you know, we have close to 180 employees, and it's, it's a lot. And so I think um, for us, and especially this year, we've really tried to take as much time to work out like how can we improve from an operations standpoint logistics be more consistent developing our culture to where we want um all of that stuff uh, that you don't really think a ton about really being mindful of it and again like 
chain is yeah, the evil word. For sure. Corporate, yeah. you know, is 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 always like the oh god, no, but but in a lot of ways trying to develop those systems. I mean, like we have an HR department. Yeah. We have like all this other stuff that if you told the guy in the food truck like that, yeah. he'd be like, what are you yeah, talking about? For sure. Um, so trying to, you know, create those things where as much as we can, um, you know, having a place where people want to come to work, where it's awesome and then they feel fulfilled and, and are making money and all that and, and not growing to a point of like, we're going to do this deal just because it's going to make money or we're going to, expand here because we got a really good deal it's like if it doesn't kind of satisfy all the non-financial side of things then it's just not worth doing so yeah um but yeah i don't know i don't know like long term you know we i we joked about this earlier but like we actually did an interview for texas monthly and they were like what do you um what do you hope like long-term vision whatever and emma said this beautiful, you know, sentence, all this stuff about we have a daughter now, you know, want to create something that's meaningful to pass it down to her and be a staple and all this. And then um, I said, I, I really hope she doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like With yeah. everything in me, I want her to be a doctor <laughs> yeah. or like a lawyer or something. Yeah. I, I hope that she's not at a restaurant midnight yeah. you know, trying to fix a broken dishwasher or something like that. Um, and she would hate that I said that again for the second time, but it's yeah. like, I, I want to, I want to, you know, build this stuff to a point where we can either just like, you know, sell it or give it away to the team or do something. But, um, my, my overall vision is like, I feel we've kind of created restaurants that are a part of the communities that really, have become sort of little places to where people can hang out and like have birthday parties. And like, yeah. we, we had a wedding here in the That's backyard. Awesome. Yeah. Um, we've done a bunch of like charity stuff. I mean, an insane amount of different events. So it's like, that's really cool. And I'd love to do that forever. I just don't also want to keep working 80 hours yeah. a week and oh, for dealing sure. with all the, the stuff. So that's probably too honest of no dude point. that's 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 straight up i mean if it makes you feel any better sometimes i don't want my kids to go to college <laughs> like i would rather like them like go to trade school or like really but, yeah, TCC's K, but, Casey, great. Yeah. but casey's like no <laughs> she she shuts me down pretty quick on yeah. that one so yeah don't don't worry about differing uh visions for our kids because yeah. Are they in tennis? Are they are they golfers? Yeah, yeah, dude, it's just like, like well, my my son loves like clay. I'm like, let's get him <laughs> in some sculpting classes or something. You know, I don't, I don't know how it works. But... Need like a, a Earl Woods situation, yeah, or something exactly. like that. Yeah, yeah I, like I need to live out my dreams vicariously through my son. <laughs> so, um, well, dude, thank you so much. Yeah, man, for doing this twice. No, it's great. Um, I think better the second time. Dude, I think it was, man. Maybe. Well, I, it, this was kind of maybe I should just do every interview twice <laughs> because I sat all day to like think about what we talked about and ruminate on it. But um, you can follow them at Heim Time or not Heim Time. There's a podcast called Heim Time. Yeah, and we need to yeah. do it again. Yeah, we were talking about that after and like. It's just tough with everything yeah, else. Yeah, you got, got a, lot of, a lot of irons in the fire. On, on YouTube, Heim Time yeah. Podcast, you can check out all our, our old stuff. The The interview with you was great. Dude, I actually went back because we were talking about uh, Matty Parker, Neil yeah. Williams. I, w I went back today and listened to some of them. Dude, they're incredible. Yeah, and they're none so of fun. whom should have been on. Like, yeah. Just because Dude. they're very nice. That's yeah. the only reason they like Dude, it was incredible, man. Came on. My friend Matt Pittman with yeah. Me Church, he had an awesome... Oh, his podcast was really great. I remember us debating uh, the the various Chick Fil A sauces. Which yeah, I still think um, that didn't get enough pub because that was a heated heated debate. Well, I will tell uh, you who really latched on is our friend Daniel Bronner. Uh, yeah, they they like bring yeah. up that we have a group text with uh, some of my old Lubbock friends, and uh, they love to rub my uh, Chick Fil A order in my face. Yeah, sometimes. From time to time it's very specific message. but it's it's yeah. one of those things where if like i didn't it's like a new world to me yeah you know what i mean where yep. like you 
you experience something through someone else's eyes and you're like, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, dude. And then uh, the, uh, if, if you uh, will just, you know, humor me, uh, spicy chicken sandwich. Right. Yes. Uh, add bacon. Yes. You had a, um, something to the effect of, of take something off because then they'll do it fresh. Was that no, no, correct? No, when or? you add the bacon, the I almost note. want to stop here and make them go listen to your podcast, but we'll just, we'll, we'll give, we'll give them a freebie. Give them a tease. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you go to Chick-fil-A, you get a sandwich, but you add bacon on it. That means they have to make it fresh. Otherwise you just get one of the stock ones. Out of the bag. It's yeah. been sitting there for an hour. Yeah. So the bacon throws it into another uh, another category. They, they make it fresh for you. It's interesting. But and then I like to throw, to really complete it, uh, you take some two big waffle fries out of your box. That's what I remember. Put it on there for crunch. Drizzle some uh, sriracha sauce from there. And... Brother, you got yourself a sandwich. I might go to Chick-fil-A on the way home. <laughs> I know. There's one, like, right over <laughs> here. So, like yeah. It. it was good. We have, I haven't had dinner yet either, so <laughs> maybe I'll take some home to the lady. Um, well, dude, thank you so much. Yeah, man. Um, awesome. Y'all stay tuned to Burleson. Yep. Hudson Oaks. Yep. Heim's going to be uh, coming somewhere near to you. Yeah. W. Hopefully. If you yeah. live in the west ish fort worth area yeah <laughs> there's plenty of options yeah, you're gonna be there dude it's gonna if be if you're awesome. in uh, richardson you're screwed but you know oh well but that uh, yeah hein barbecue on all our social media yep. uh, anything that's not twitter my wife controls um which is great and uh, yeah i'd recommend the twitter follow though too is it just i at Heim barbecue uh, on twitter Heim bbq yeah. Yeah, yeah twitter's if you like spiciness like your sandwich, like your Chick-fil-A sandwiches, that's where you go. There's some hot takes. I try yeah. as much as possible not to use it for business, yeah. which drives my wife crazy. Sure. Um, but that's what the people want. Yeah, and man. So, you they know. Need, they, need, they need balance of, like, you know, Emma's running the yeah. you know, family stuff. If you have, stuff, like, an allergy question, don't yeah. tweet me. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, that's Does that not, happen a lot? No, I think, you know, that's Every more, now and then that's though. a Facebook question. Yeah, you know? that is a Facebook. Uh, you yeah. know, different, you know, what's the, this or that? It's, eh, you know, I don't. Yeah. But, you know, what do you think about, like, you know, SMU quarterback situation? Oh, yeah. I'll You're give you three it. or four tweets For on sure. That. I mean, that's 140 characters easy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had a debate last night, which I didn't realize that people eat chicken wings without dips. This is a real thing. Well, somebody said, I did see that the dry rub is acceptable. I, I'm with you. you you good with that? I'm good with that. That's oh, well, I'm saying what they said. I don't, yeah. I, I'm, I've never gotten a dry rub wing. I'm a, I'm a sauce man. If we're working out like a bill of rights, then I think yeah. like that's probably number one of sure. the wing amendments like I, I can roll with that but yeah I, I tweeted something to the effect after that of like so you guys are just eating wings wiping your hands off and going home and yeah. that's what people people are like yes that's exactly what I do which to me is like you got there's someone in a well at your house if sure. you're doing that yeah. but be it ranch, blue cheese, whatever. I like a dip here and yeah. there. I like them saucy. Yes. Um, I put it to a poll even. Right. And yeah. Close to, I think, 600 votes. Um, and so it's interesting. So does that in any way benefit our restaurant? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. But I guess... In no way. This is, I'm, I'm the worst closer ever. We should have already been gone. But now I'm really curious, like... <laughs> When you, like, y'all have your barbecue sauce out, right, at your restaurants. So, like, what, do you take it as, like, uh, is it like a, a jab at you when you see somebody dous dousing it, dousing your brisket? Great question. Yeah. Um, I, I personally don't. Yeah. But that is a sticky point with, I think, a lot of uh, barbecue cooks, pit yeah. masters, whatever. The general consensus with Texas barbecue is it doesn't need sauce. Yeah. It's more of a Kansas City, St. Louis, you know, whatever. Um, I, like, really don't care. Like, my thought yeah. is, like, if you uh, give me money, you know, you can throw it on the ground and, and yeah. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, you I, bought it. I Cheers. hope you would eat it and yeah. enjoy it and experience it the way I would want you to, but it's not going to, like, bother me. So 
you know, we only do one sauce. We, we're working on a few other options now that we have we have our sauce and our rubs and buckies too, yeah. and working on some other stores, so you can buy them there. So it's like, I don't know. That's uh, I mean, I hate to bring them up again, but Dan Bronner won't eat a steak without steak sauce, so, which I find. I don't uh, think I knew that. I'm it's the text I mean, like so in that respect, prison. Yeah, dude. Should yes. be in prison. And for life. Yeah. Yeah, lock him up. But, like, I, I understand and I think there are benefits to, uh, you know, great barbecue sauce with good meats. And then even, you know, any kind of, like, cuisine is going to have some some sort of dip or something like that. Um, so the idea that someone would eat chicken wings, especially spicy ones, and then not in some way dip or, or that was was just something that I didn't know. Yeah. And I, you know, you're talking about a guy from Fort Worth that's not been too far away. Um, so I was enlightened last night, and I learned a lot. But I think only the poll was like 16% of people are no ranch, blue cheese, condiment wow. of any type. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that's vindication, but I think yeah. it's uh, it's an interesting study. So, yeah. That's the type of stuff that we explore on That's good. Uh, I mean, barbecue Twitter. This is this is the kind of talk that I wanted to start a podcast for. It's <laughs> like sauces. People want to hear and this. Yeah, dude, they want to know. They want to know. Because, yeah, yeah I, I never know if I'm offending someone with barbecue sauce. So You're not going to offend me. Yeah. Maybe well, somebody else. Well, I don't, I don't need it. I like I love the ribs here, so that's all that matters, man. So thank you so much again. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next episode. Great, dude. Man. That was awesome, dude. That was, I think oh, it was better, even. Yeah. I think it was even Second better. Day, yeah. Loved it. Everything day, recorded. Yeah. All right. Again, Mr. Travis Heim, just straight up legend. Great dude. Him and Emma um, have just been slaying for years, and it's so encouraging to see two people. Um, who are so kind and have uh, the right goals in mind do well um, and, you know, be working for the city. And I'm so pumped that I get to call them friends and that I got to, set, you know, have them for the podcast. Like I said, ad nauseum. Um, so, yeah, why? What are we doing here? What is this? Well, like I said, I enjoy podcasts. I like listening to them. I like making them. I don't know that I like making them. We're here now. Obviously, I'm a little nervous. Uh, it was the first one. Okay, so just like there were some camera issues, I think there was actually some like computer sounds. So guys, just take it easy, okay? Keep the comments friendly because I'm, I'm trying my best out here, okay? But I'm very excited. I've always wanted to do this. I like messing around with cameras. Um, I like doing audio stuff, obviously, with the music stuff. And I figured, hey, man, um, this would be a cool hobby. Um, you know, for a lot of years, music was kind of a hobby that made money. And now I've been lucky enough to uh, make music my job and playing music and making music, which is just a huge blessing, and I'm super thankful. Um, but I needed a new hobby. And camera stuff has always been there. But I figured it would be cool to combine the cool visuals with um, you know, a podcast. And so that's what we're doing. Um, it's obviously, not obviously, it's just the way it is. Um, don't think I'm going to be able to do it every week. Like all my favorite podcasts, they come out weekly. I'm going to shoot for maybe one to two a month. And that's what my goal is going to be. Um, I'm looking forward to talking to like really interesting people, um, who've succeeded and maybe even not succeeded maybe people that have failed um but basically about you know the meme of like what i think i do what my neighbors think i do what my customers think i do what my parents think i do what my dog thinks i do that meme you know what i'm talking about you've seen them and i think everybody's looked at those and kind of put their own lives into that picture and i thought it would be really interesting to talk to people about their work plug Curtis Benson's work <laughs> marketing um, but I, I think it's really interesting to think about the things that humans 
deal with in their own minds for their work, their jobs, their day to day, and how what's going on in our own minds and priorities and stresses and worries um, maybe aren't even like not even in the same stratosphere to the public as they look at you function. Um, and so I think it's really interesting to kind of pop that, pop those domes open, take a little peek at what, what's stressing people out, what, what's motivating them. I don't know why I said it like that. What's motivating them to do what they do and do really cool stuff. So, you know, Travis Heim, entrepreneur, chef, pit master, um, businessman. I want to talk to music people. Um, I'd love to talk, you know, talk to some artists, um, just anybody, interesting people. I mean, just uh, maybe they do the the gas station. Well, you know, what what's his day look like? What's he think about day to day? Um, it's just basically about how people work. Um, I think it's really, I think it's really interesting, and I think it's going to be fun to talk to people about, and I think it's going to be fun to explore um, questions and like how to engage people with that. Something that I'm really excited about, and I'm um, looking forward to doing for you to listen to if you'd like and watch um also kind of the why is uh you know we got to get that content up for the old youtube full transparency here this partly is going to help um get the youtube you know numbers up which would be super helpful for the band as we uh start making our next steps into recording new music, doing um, you know more sessions with the band, recording sessions, um, and just cool like video stuff with the guys. And I, I think um, it's really fun for me to do that. It's fun for Tyler to mix the audio for it, and um, it's something we want to do a lot more of. It would be great if we get paid a uh, you know two or three dollars every now and then. And so this podcast is going to help that. Um, episodes are going to come up first on YouTube for like a week before, um, you know, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. So you can go check it out visually, obviously, with your eyes, your eyeballs, um, on YouTube a week early. And that's the plan. We'll see what happens. Maybe I screw it up. Maybe I plug it into the wrong website. Just like I plug the microphones into the wrong deal. Um trying to keep this one pretty short so it doesn't burn people out but just want to let say hi i'm grady um that was travis that you heard talking um we've got a lot of shows coming up i think by the time this comes out we're going to be getting ready to go to colorado um for caveman music festival which maybe i'm hoping to possibly record some podcast stuff up there too um there'll be a lot of really interesting uh famous music people um so hopefully some of them would be willing to sit down and talk but um we're gonna be doing caveman M music festival um then we're playing manitow manitou springs colorado denver colorado and greeley colorado um and then we got a whole bunch more dates um all through the fall and into winter all over the country I'm not bragging that's just the way it is right now, and we're really excited for uh, the road this winter. You can go to gradyspencer.com slash shows for more info on where we're headed and tickets and things of that nature. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm looking forward to growing, making things look better, making things sound better. I'm nervous the wind noise is going to be out of control, but um, it'll get better. So stick along stick along and whatever you know what i'm saying just velcro yourselves to this podcast and let's venture forth into the universe and uh say what up to each other so thank you so much for tuning in um we'll see you on the next episode thank you to travis heim thank you to emma heim for letting travis heim sneak away again for two episodes um and that's it man thank y'all so much Hope you're doing well. Take care of yourselves. Work hard. That'd be the closing line, I think. Work it. Nah, it's weird. Work hard. Work smart. 
Not hard. Ah. Uh.